Um, hi, everyone. Good to see you again. Um, you know, I feel really privileged to be uh, sitting here with Stephen. I've known Stephen for a number of years. Um, he's one of the kind of younger computer scientists in our industry that's uh, done impactful work and, in my experience, has been extremely thoughtful um, about everything that he ever does, uh, including uh, how he's building Arbitrum. So very grateful to have him here and, and even more excited to be uh, working with him on uh, providing oracles to Arbitrum and being a small part of the great things they're building there. So Stephen, thank you for joining us. Absolutely, and likewise, really great to be here and thank you for all the work you do helping make Arbitrum what it is and uh, really also excellent to work with you always. Thank you. Um, so, you know, there's been a lot of developments at Arbitrum and I think you guys have been doing great work uh, moving forward at breakneck speed to, to bring, you know, successful layer two expansion to Ethereum, which I think is, is very impressive and important. Um, you know, I've heard a lot of great things about Nitro, but want to give you the floor to let you explain, you know, what Nitro is, how it's evolving, and, you know, where it's going to go from here. Absolutely. So Arbitrum Nitro is our new roll-up stack, our new software stack that uh, powers Arbitrum, Arbitrum 1 and Arbitrum Nova, our two chains today. And a few weeks ago, at the very last day of August, which was exactly a one-year anniversary of the launch of Arbitrum 1, we migrated Arbitrum 1 to the Nitro stack. And the analogy I'd like to give is you imagine we have an airplane that's flying, that was our, the Arbitrum 1, we took the engine, which is our classic stack, and we put the Nitro stack in. So you put a brand new engine in. And that's a feat in and of itself, but for the users and developers, what's so cool about this engine, uh, it's a few things. But one is it does much better compression. That means it uses fewer layer one resources, layer one here being Ethereum. And what that means is that you can do a lot more transactions for a lot cheaper. And that's the thing that I think most users cared about a lot, and uh, they noticed that immediately. You know, we like to... Uh, under promise and over deliver, and I think we did that with Nitro, and people were very, very happy with uh, the, the reduced transaction cost, the imp increased throughput. We, in, in, we uh, increased about 7x, so we are now running about 7x capacity where we were before. And also for developers, uh, Arbitrum is as equivalent to the EVM as possible. There is nothing that you can do on the EVM that you can't do in Arbitrum that's both on the API level at the surface and under the hood as well. So our, Nitro was a, long, a big development project for us. But of course, you know, even now that we've launched Nitro, it's not complete. To, you know, to, to your point, what is the active development status of that? Nitro is amazing. It's a lot better than what we've done previously, but we still have a lot, a lot of um, things up our sleeves to make it even better and to 7x again and reduce the fees further because ultimately, you know, the thing that I know is the demand is not stopping to come. The demand is only increasing. And scaling is a bit of a cat and mouse game. You scale and then more users come and you need to scale again. So we're constantly staying one step ahead, and that's why the Nitro development started a year ago, just when we launched Arbitrum 1. We were already looking for the next thing, and you could see that in the public GitHub repository. And similarly today, there are many, many initiatives going on saying, how do we make sure we're able to keep up for the scale in a year from now? Yeah, it makes sense. So not, not only did they, did they successfully do uh, this massive upgrade, but they did it literally a year later on time. So congratulations, that's, that's great work, really. Thank you. <clears throat> um, I've also heard a lot of great things about Nova and your work with Reddit. Um, you know, there was a, a big process to choose the scaling uh, and blockchain solution that Reddit wanted to use. And after doing a lot of diligence, you know, they landed on Arbitrum. And as I understand, created Nova together with you guys. And, and really, you know, Arbitrum is Nova. So um, I'm going to, before I explain it incorrectly, I'm going <laughs> to let you kind of make sure we understand, you know, how is it going with Reddit? How is uh, Nova fitting in? Um, how is that developing? Yeah, absolutely. So it was about two years ago, a little more, July of 2020, Reddit put out what they call the Great Reddit Scaling Bake Off. And basically what they said is we have this great idea of using blockchain technology in a way that's really, really additive and really important, but we don't know how to scale it to mass users. And what they did is they basically had a call for proposals and invited all different blockchain teams and scaling solutions in particular to propose how to scale community points. So what is Reddit community points? Uh, if you've used Reddit um, in the past in certain communities, now it's in two subreddits, there's a community points uh, feature. And what that is, uh, is basically you participate in communities, you comment, you like things, you basically are take part in the community, and you get points. You get these, um, cr this cre these credits for what you've done. And, but the key thing about the blockchain is self-sovereignty. The idea that users want to actually own their points. So I, you know, users can spend years gathering these points, and they want to know that they're actually theirs. They actually sit in their wallets and no central service provider, even the issuer, so even in this case, Reddit, can take those points away from them. 
And that's what Reddit uh, put out their call for proposals on, their Great Reddit Scaling Bake Off two years ago. One year ago, so July of 2021, just a year, you know, one year after they, they, they did that, they announced the winner. So about 25 or so different projects um, proposed solutions, including Arbitrum. They chose Arbitrum, and then it was a year in the making of us working with them to say, okay, how do we actually bring this scale to user? Because Reddit has a lot, a lot of users, and you know, even though Arbitrum 1 has fees that are quite cheap, we needed something that was even cheaper. Arbitrum Nova was the public chain that we launched that uses the data availability committee to make, che to make fees even cheaper but still giving Reddit the high security that they need. And one of the nice things is, again, users have self-sovereignty over their points. So now users are able to own those points, and they know that no matter what, nobody can take it away from them. Those points live in Arbitrum. But Arbitrum Nova is also EVM compatible, or EVM equivalent. And what that means is others can build applications. So you as a gamer can go ahead and say, I'm going to build a game in Arbitrum Nova, and the currency of my game is Reddit community points. You can actually build an ecosystem around these points, and that's one of the, to me, most underexplored but fascinating parts of this, and underexplored because it's very early. This chain only launched in August, but I think we'll see a massive ecosystem, a secondary ecosystem built around community points, and it's an opportunity for uh, anyone who's interested. Yeah, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense, and it, you know, it shows the potential to how you can have multiple instances of Arbitrum you know, for specific use cases scaling up to meet the demands of, of those use cases. Exactly. So, so that also makes a lot of sense. Um, so just to kind of switch gears uh, a little bit, how are you seeing oracles and oracle networks like Chainlink fitting into you know, these systems like Nitro and Nova? What is the role you see them playing and, and how do they contribute to, to, to the plans you have with this? Oracles are one of the critical components of well, DeFi, but really blockchain technology more generally. And, you know, it's, uh, I don't want to lecture you on, on oracles, but as you know, the blockchains are really, really good at enforcing the data correctness inside the blockchain. But then the question is, in order to do interesting things, you often need data from outside the blockchain. And the question is, how do you ensure that the data is secure? And how do you ensure that the data is reliable? Right, two really, really critical questions. And without that, most blockchain functionalities are, are just not that interesting. The things that are limited to the blockchain, well, there are some, I shouldn't say you know, there are none, but the richness of what we're able to do, particularly in DeFi, would not be possible without oracles. But you know, oracles is, is, is a problem where um, you say, oh, so just bring the data, but that's not the way it works. Security is key and uh, reliability is key. And you know, Chainlink has obviously demonstrated mar being the market leader here and for good reason, and you'll see Chainlink chain link fees that are reliable and secure, that no matter what the market is doing and what the cost of posting on chain, you always know that the chain link fees are reliably there and you know, have great partners obviously working with you posting uh, these fees. So there's a reliability of data, a distribution of the, of the sources. And I think this is, again, I, I can't under, uh, underscore how critical this is for the uh, success of DeFi and the success of everything we're doing. And you know, one of the things I'm excited about is um, I think there's so much that oracles can do in terms of making more and more data accessible, right? More than uh, financial data, et cetera. And I know you are exploring a lot of those uh, different opportunities and, and, and innovating there. And I think um, in, in a lot of ways, the innovation of what we do in the blockchain is limited by the richness of the data that oracles can give us. And you know, we're very, very excited about the work you're doing. I think that it's critical to all of our success. Great, great, makes sense. Yeah, we're, we're thrilled to, to help Arbitrum support it in, in the best ways possible, make it a great developer ecosystem, um, providing data, randomness, compute, anything we can to, uh, to make it a successful ecosystem. I think you folks are doing, doing a great job. Um, you know, you were actually one of the authors uh, on the original Flash Boys 2.0 paper that started to formalize uh, the first notions of minor extractable value. And now, you know, we are working on fair sequencing services, and we've done, you know, a number of posts discussing how, you know, that might be useful to Arbitrum or how that might be interesting. Um, very eager to hear your views on where uh, minor extractable value stands today, how you see, you know, fair sequencing services possibly helping solve that problem for uh, Arbitrum and the ecosystem there. You know, what, what are your views on that? Yeah, I think minor extractable value is one of the uh, key interesting research problems, but also practical issues to be dealt with in the blockchain space. And it's funny because when we were writing that paper uh, together with Phil, but also Ari Jules, of course, was the advisor, uh, uh, chief scientist of Chainlink Labs, you know, we uh, had this question of 
we realize how important this work is, but often you don't realize how things will be well received. I remember Ari saying, you know, this is really, really important work. I don't know how the paper will be cited or not, but we know we're doing really important work here. And, and you know, thankfully it's taken off. A lot of people have appreciated uh, the importance of this problem. And so the history is uh, we worked on that paper and then some of us, Ari included, um, and some others went ahead and worked on a second paper around fair sequencing. And I think, you know, we're very committed to fair, fair sequencing as one of the key tenets of the solution to minimizing MEV. We won't get rid of MEV entirely, but our approach is let's minimize it as much as possible, let's get rid of as much as possible, and then the rest we democratize access to. So critical, though, to minimizing MEV is a protocol that can provide fair sequencing services. And obviously, Chainlink is doing a lot of really, really important research, and we're collaborating closely on these initiatives um, of how how to build uh, fair sequencing, in, bring fair sequencing into production. And, you know, we're excited to continue to work with your team towards figuring out what that looks like in production and how we can work together on this. Because, again, we are fully committed to bringing fair sequencing into Arbitrum because it's so, so critical um, to give users guarantees that, their, that MEV extraction will be minimized. Makes sense. Yep, com completely agree with you. I, I think that um, the ability to reduce MEV as much as possible and to assure people that the trust uh, that they have in blockchain systems and layer twos and the places where they conduct their financial transactions will be at a completely uh, different level from the traditional financial system is one of the main tenets of, uh, of our industry. So I'm thrilled to hear you and, and other folks building these systems feel that way and that we really need to find a way to, to get the world to uh, a better place on this. In the upcoming talk later today, Ari Jules will be discussing his views on fair sequencing services. He was one of the folks of that helped author the, the Flash Boys 2.0 paper with uh, Steve and Phil and a number of other great, uh, great co-authors. And um, you know, really looking forward to his thoughts on it. Um, as I know, you know, Stephen uh, is also, even though I'm sure he knows them pretty well at this point as well. Yes, well, yeah, I, I definitely am going to uh, be very curious what Ari says. I probably know a little bit more about it, but I always love uh, to hear when Ari speaks. He is, always has, shares a very interesting and new perspective on things, and I think here a critically important one. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Great. Well, Stephen, we have a, a, a lot of the conference left, a lot of talks to give. I really appreciate you coming and speaking with us and sharing your views and uh, all the progress you've made. Um, definitely excited to, to be working together on all this and uh, helping take our Arbitrum and Nitro and Nova and all the other Arbitrum variants that would come out to new heights. Thank you very much and uh, looking forward to, to working together on all this. Thank Likewise, you. thank you for having me.